Welcome back crafters and thanks for joining us for another preview of an embellishkits.com scrapbooking kit. You can find more subscription details on their website, but each time your shipment is going out, Shelby sends out an email asking if you'd prefer an alternate kit over the one that she's prepared for the month. This month we're taking a look at the alternative scrapbooking kit number 17, full of the beautiful legacy collection by Simple Stories. Pre-made die-cut fans will exclaim over the 66 pieces in this little pack. There are also thicker chipboard versions of many of these heritage icons, like the clock, doily, the tree, house, and those signature Simple Stories flowers. To further accent our pages, there are beautiful tones of enamel dots, maroon, gray, forest green, and mustard. These are hard to find tones. You can bet Shelby sent us some coordinating cardstock and twine to go with these rich, warm colors. I want to show you these gorgeous three-dimensional flowers from Prima. These are the types of embellishments that really pop off the page. And in today's Craft with Anna tutorial, I'll show you how to mimic that look with supplies you may already have. So while I flip through these papers, go ahead and get out your tools. You'll need your scissors, adhesive, some phone tape or pop dots, glue dots or even a hot glue gun, and your 12 inch paper trimmer. Okay, we've got two cut apart sheets from that legacy collection. And a polka dot from Sweater Weather by Simple Stories. This brown side is gorgeous. Here is that buttercream basil cardstock, two pieces, and they're textured too. Then there are three sheets from Echo Park, a favorite company of mine. Two sheets of matte print backed with newspaper from their Reflections line, and then some navy and light blue from their Times and Seasons 2 collection. Put all this together with amazing instructions and full color examples. Add your photos and you'll be set. Let's get started with our tutorial. In my ongoing effort to conserve pretty paper, I'll be using these bright orange 12 by 12 cardstocks as my background. This kit comes with the two sheets of creamy basil for you to build up on, or grab some from your stash like me. Starting with the light blue cardstock, trim two pieces measuring four by 12 inches. Paper savers, you only need one 4 by 12 inch strip and another measuring 4 by 6 and a half inches. You see, I just turned my paper to get a smaller strip. Don't forget to cut off the manufacturer's strips from your papers. Adhere these to the tops of your pages. You can push that smaller piece into the top right corner of the page on your right hand side, which we'll refer to as page 2. From the rainbow polka dot, figure out a clean area to cut and trim a 5 by 12 inch strip. Remember, these are the instructions for paper saving. We'll use more of this sheet on our other page, so set it aside. Place the rainbow dot here against the seam. And then get out the title strips paper. Let's save time by cutting more than one. The full color examples are great references for shortcuts like this. We need the piece reading Families Are Forever, and then further in, we need four by six inches of the script and scallop strips. You'll want the part with the most design on it. See how dressed up the page looks already? Now we'll fill in this bottom corner with what would have already been there if we'd used the basil as our base. If we cut a piece measuring four and a half by six and a half, we'll have plenty for our layout. You can even use that cut apart card as a cutting guide. Here's a piece for the leftovers pile. So that side is practically done. Let's work on the other side, starting with the four by six card cut apart sheet. Let's fussy cut or use our paper cutters to get the clock with a grid behind it. The reverse of this cart is absolutely stunning, but I don't know what I would include it on. Maybe you've got a great idea. Leave a suggestion in the comments below. This card goes in kind of in an 
awkward position in the middle of these two cards lined up flush with the bottom. It's about an inch from the right side of this page. But once we place this little aqua and maroon heart tab at the top, I think I love the look. Definitely going to have to remember this visual building block trick. With this foundation complete, let's go back to page one here on the left. Once again, I've got alternate cuts to keep your kit intact. If this top piece is four inches and we have four by six cards going vertically here, that leaves us with a two inch gap to fill at the bottom. I tend to add a half inch for wiggle room, so cut a two and a half by 12 inch strip from your basil buttercream cardstock. Now from that large brown floral side, I'm going to trim borders measuring one inch by 12 inches. Now I've still got that beautiful flower to include on another project. We'll eventually glue these in place here at the edges of our empty space. And that space gets filled in with those four by six cards. Oh, it looks like I could have cut this off earlier. Sometimes I cut all of these apart and then use a binder clip to hold them together. It's an easy and effective storage solution. This card goes smack dab in the middle here. I'm using pictures from Father's Day this year. My dad was here visiting and that's always special to share them with the family. The great thing about this design is that, like everything Shelby sends us, it is versatile. So instead of four by six photos, I'm using smaller prints with borders. One of the functions of our point and shoot camera is the fun frame function, which adds a little something too. Perhaps you have an app for that. I'm gonna cut these two apart because I want a little less structure to my page. I can see I'm gonna need a little more paper here. I'll look at this cut apart sheet to find something that coordinates. Another way to customize your page. Okay, this one will work. Yeah, it looks pretty good. But, oh, but wait, here's the family tree and that is so much better. While I play, let's talk about dads. I have so many fond memories of time spent outdoors with mine. And so anytime we get together, that's kind of what I expect. Whether it's camping in the summer or skiing in the winter, he always lets us know how much he enjoys life and sharing its pleasures with us. This year, I was happy to honor him and the father of my own family with a delicious, nutritious, home-cooked meal out in the backyard with the summer sun shining down on us. Yum! Okay, I figured out a way to extend the use of this little cut-apart card, too. Moved things about until I was satisfied. Something a grid pattern lends itself to. It's time to get artsy, folks. It's easy to add extra vintage distressing to your projects with a little ink. I'm choosing a soft burgundy red. Ink is a super tool. It brings together all of the pieces on the layout, even off-whites, creams, and whites like I have mixing together here. Just brush the ink pad along the edge of your paper, lightly for a soft effect and harder for a more intense look. Mmm, this dark blue would have looked great here too. Adhere all your pieces with the glue of your choice. I prefer a roller adhesive. Once all your papers and photos are in place, we can add our embellishments. Grouping items together in embellishment clusters is a great way to add lots of embellishments to your layout and still let your photos take the focus. Try mixing the different die cuts, stickers, and chipboard pieces included in your kit to add color and texture. Then pump up the fun with enamel dots, brads, even buttons. Extend your die cuts with this simple trick. Cut them in half. <laughs> no, really, it's that simple. See how I use the packaging to make sure these line up evenly? This little frame will look fabulous behind our largest 3D flower, the one with the danglies. You can cut off some of these pieces if they don't match the feel of your photos, too. I have to say, this page is coming together beautifully. Let's add ink to a few more of the smaller die cuts and adhere them under this title strip. Remember, embellishments like this are easy to create. Just grab your scrap paper bucket. We'll add a small red die cut heart at the top of this pennant cluster. You can even add dimension to clusters that are built into the design of your papers. These enamel dots are so pretty and I have the hardest time using the things I love most, but I'm working on it. I'll add one to each of these three embellishment groupings we created. And then one more for good measure down here where I tied a bow with the twine on. And that wraps up this side. 
That large prima flower and the die cuts add the extra wow factor, but my photos still take center stage. Perfect! Going back to page two of our tutorial layout, I've got some more of those smaller photos printed at three by four inches. I had the idea to layer these two together down here, with that flower cluster printed on the border strips being slightly overlapped. We'll come back to this area. These photos are from an outdoor music event, and this crowd shot can go right up here near the top. I've set all the die cuts I thought might fit my theme right up here within sight and arm's reach, and I'm using the full color example included with this kit as well as the written instruction sheet to get my placement looking tray chic. Remember, layering different textures and shapes in embellishment groupings like this is not just a fun way to use up some product. They create tons of visual interest on your layout without overwhelming the photos. These die cuts can even be used to cover areas of your photo that might distract the viewer. You could even use some foam adhesive to add extra height to these layers. Mixing in different paper collections with similar tones is a snap when you add a little ink to the edges. And once I get all my pieces looking like they belong, I usually take a quick picture with my camera or cell phone to use as a reference when adhering them to the page. Remember how I said we could dress up these already fabulous Prima flowers? Simply use your die cuts to enhance that theme. I chose the large flowers from the package and layered one behind this one here off to the side. Then another flower cluster can go up here on that pattern paper flower printed into the design of the script and scallop strip. Play with bringing your elements to the fore or background of your clusters. Here's how my finished page turned out and a close up. See the tiny gold flower adhered to the one on the pattern paper? This cluster has a lot of movement created with the little sentiment die cut pieces. And here's a little triangle sprinkling of enamel dots. I accented that love tag with some more tied twine as well. You'd never know there was a man in a bright yellow jacket in this picture. You can see it reflected though. These three kids had an awesome time dancing at the concert. And at the corner here, you can see where I slipped that flower die cut behind a prima flower. I actually cut off the part that you don't see and used it behind the other flower I showed earlier. Here it is again. This brings cohesion to my clusters. It's time for more die cuts and even a part of the manufacturer's strip. A small pop dot behind this aqua heart gives it just enough lift that you can see the red heart printed on that aqua tab behind it. Here's a look at that section of the layout. There is a lot of pattern and movement going on, but my photos are still on stage thanks to the use of those little arrows all around the page. Just as I was finishing up, I found room to include a part of that Prima flower packaging which reads, so happy, moments with you, cherished moments, <laughs> too cute to throw away. Another look at that completed page too, and a reminder that when you love a layout as much as I loved this page one, there's no reason not to display it. Find a 12 by 12 frame shadow box or just lean it on the mantle for your family to enjoy. Just be sure to preserve it behind glass or in your album's protective sleeves before too much dust falls on it. Thanks for joining us for an exclusive peek at the alternative scrapbooking kit number 17 from embellishkits.com. You can find their scrapbooking and card making kit clubs to subscribe to as well as single kits available for purchase at their website, preview and tutorial videos using those kits here on this Craft with Anna YouTube channel, and coordinating trendy hot products galore on embellishonline.com. Thanks for watching!